Tonight on Y News. Manila Water Services Incorporated warned its consumers of the possible return of daily rotational water service interruptions with the current dip in the water levels at Angat Dam and Ipo Dams. Minority senators oppose the Supreme Court ruling on the Marcos electoral protest. Department of Justice begins its preliminary investigation on the anomalous 2013 Pampanga drug raid. The Internal Affairs Service of the Philippine National Police believes the recommendation to dismiss four ninja cops had been whitewashed. And motorists that fly the South Luzon Expressway support a proposal to cut toll fee collection amid the heavy traffic experienced in the area for several weeks now. Good evening. Angat Dam needs three tropical cyclones to reach its maximum level, according to Pagasa. And because of continuous decrease in its water level, water concessionaire Mainilad may soon implement water service interruptions. Ray Pelayo details why. Mainilad customers are advised to store water in the coming days. This is due to the water service interruptions Mainilad may implement as the water level of Angat Dam continues to dip since October 8. At more than 189 meters on October 8, it dropped by 2 meters this morning. Um, halos wala lang po talagang um, pag-ulan po sa may watershed po. The Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration or Pagasa says three tropical cyclones are needed for Angat Dam to reach its maximum water level of 210 meters. Hindi naman kailangan dun mismo yung um, bagyo. Minsan kasi kung sakop siya nung um, cloud rain bands niya na nandun po binubuo siya malakas na pulgo. A drop in the water level has been observed not only in Angat but also in Ipo Dam. Maynilad advises the public to stay updated for the schedule of possible water service interruptions through their social media pages. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Minority Senators Laila Dilima, Franklin Drilon, Risa Ontiveros, and Kiko Panghilinan expressed strong opposition to the decision of the Supreme Court or SC on the electoral protest filed by former Senator Bongbong Marcos against Vice President Lenny Robredo. In a statement, members of the Senate minority stressed that the case should be dismissed, citing the progress of the recount, which they said obviously revealed the victory of Robredo against Marcos in the 2016 vice presidential election. The opposition senators accused the SC, sitting as a presidential electoral tribunal, or PET, of breaking its own rules for not acting appropriately on the matter. The minority senators sided with Sen Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio whose dissenting opinion stated that it was Robredo who received the most number of votes in the three areas personally picked by Marcos, Negros Oriental, Iloilo, and Camarines Sur, where he claimed his votes were rigged. The SC ruled to release the result of the recount in three provinces concerned in Marcos' poll protest. The SC asked Robredo and Marcos to submit their comments on the results which they need to submit within a period of 20 days from receipt of the notice. As announced by SC spokesperson Brian Keith Posaka in a press briefing on Tuesday. Some motorists support the proposed six-month rollback or suspension of toll in the South Luzon Expressway because of heavy traffic. But the SLEX administration admits the proposal is complicated. Sherwin Kulabong tells us why. Hans Cortes used to travel to the northern part of the country four times a month to visit his relatives there. But because of heavy traffic in the South Luzon Expressway or SLEX, he travels only twice to lower his fuel and toll expenses. The resolution submitted by Laguna 3rd District Congresswoman Sol Argones seeks to reduce the toll on SLEX or suspend it for six months. Hans and other motorists are pleased with such proposal. Dahil parang pwede mo nang i... Pwede mo na siyang i-convert sa panggas mo na lang siya dahil, dahil nga sa traffic. 
Lang sa uh, unang-una sa traffic, talo kami sa diesel. Pag minsan, eh, inaabot minsan apat na oras bago kami makalabas ng norte. Ay kung hindi, maabuti na ng dalawang oras dahil laking tipid sa diesel. Kaya mas magaling, may bawasan ng to pay. But Skyway ONM Corporation President Manuel Bonoan says there are some matters to be considered to follow Congresswoman Argonis' proposal. Besides, they are more focusing on fast tracking their construction before the month of November ends. The Toll Regulatory Board has recently warned to impose fine on the SLEX operator due to issues of traffic decongestion. Sherwin Kulubong, UNTB News and Rescue, Kalamba, Laguna. The Department of Justice or DOJ begins its investigation on the case of 13 Pampanga cops involved in the anomalous drug raid in Pampanga six years ago. The DOJ also issued a subpoena again to Police Major Rodney Baloyo, who are among the accused in the alleged drug recycling. April Senadoza reports why. The Department of Justice, or DOJ, started today its preliminary investigation on the anomalous drug raid in 2013 in Mexico, Pampanga. Thirteen cops are said to be involved in the alleged drug recycling. The cops were ordered to attend the probe on their case and submit additional evidence. It can be noted, Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara created a three-member panel of prosecutors to reinvestigate the case of the accused cops, who conducted a buy-bust operation in which 160 kilos of shabu went missing. The Philippine National Police Criminal Investigation and Detection Group, or PNPCIDG, asked for more time to the DOJ panel of prosecutors to establish the identity of Johnson Lee and Ding Wen Kun. And what pleading or pleadings are you referring to, sir? I mean, the motion to, uh, to issue subpoena to the responsible officers of the uh, Bureau of Immigration and Deportation. You know. The DOJ wants a copy of the stenographic notes of the Senate hearing on Ninja Cops. We don't have in our records, sir, the said transcript of stenographic notes. We do not still have the... the uh, TSN. The group of police major Rodney Baloyo are accused of planting evidence and recycling seized illegal drugs from a suspected drug lord, John San Lee. Baloyo was not present during the reinvestigation. That's why the DOJ issued him a subpoena again. Baloyo is currently detained in the new Bolibid prison in Montelupa City after the Senate cited him in contempt for being evasive. We still issued a subpoena to the said uh, respondents and even wrote a letter to the uh, Senate President asking permission for him to be allowed in these uh, proceedings. The DOJ panel gave five days to the PNPC IDG and SPO1 Eligio Valeroso to file additional evidence and supplemental affidavit. Those uh, uh, evidence only exist as of now uh rumors no? or uh, estimation lang wala talagang direct evidence na merong ganitong uh, bribe or merong ganito talagang unaccounted shabu so importante yan so we still looking on that April Seredoza UNTV News and Rescue Manila The Internal Affairs Service of the Philippine National Police believes their recommendation to dismiss four ninja cops had been whitewashed. Following this, they seek to become an entity separate from the PNP. Lea Ilagan clarifies why. The PNP Internal Affairs Service, or ES, has recommended the dismissal of four policemen involved in the anomalous drug raid in Pampanga in 2013. They are Police Lieutenant Joven de Guzman, Police Master Sergeant Donald Roque, Police Master Sergeant Romel Vidal and Police Corporal Romeo Encarnacion Guerrero Jr. These four cops are also said to be involved in the planting of evidence in a drug operation in Antipolo Rizal on May 4, 2019. 
But according to ES Inspector General Authority Alfigar Triambolo, the PNP did not implement their dismissal recommendation. Mas maganda kasi yung aming uh, samahan relationship ng dating chief PNP, si, uh, si Bato de la Rosa, si Nador Brother. Kasi yung resolution ko, kung anong recommendation ko, ay uh, direkta sa kanyang opisina at inaksyon na naman niya. Pero ngayon, medyo na bago. Kasi uh, merong memorandum na yung aking resolution, kung anong recommendation ay dadaan mo na sa dilon. Triambolo says... They believe there has been whitewashing going on in the investigation on the 13 policemen involved in the Ago Batu incident in Mexico, Pampanga. That is why there's been lacking of evidence to support the administrative case they filed against the cops. Triambolo adds they will again file cases of grave misconduct, violation of law and irregularity in the performance of duty against the suspects. Ipapile namin yon ang kailangan lang namin yung mga testimony o yung mga uh, transcript doon sa Congress para umusog na yung kaso. Because of such incident, IAS wants to be separated from the PNP. They also seek a civilian investigator to avoid bias. Kung hindi kasi ikokorek yan, alam naman natin kung pare-kumpare, uh, inanak sa kasal, eh, it will breed ng makakaroon ng uh, misconduct yan later on kasi kinukonsente. IAS also has no power to investigate the PNP chief. Hindi pwede dahil ang internal affairs ay nasa office mismo ng Chief PNP. Siya po yung magdesisyon. Hindi niya pwede yung desisyonan yung kanyang sarili. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue, Camp Krame. The well, Senate Blue Ribbon Committee seeks the Department of Justice's protection to the witnesses of the alleged Agobato operation of the so-called ninja cops. Nel Maribuhok explains why. Senate Blue Ribbon Committee Chairman Richard Gordon will try to finish the committee report on the Ago Bato scheme probe within this week. According to the Senator, the report may contain the possible liabilities of the personalities involved in the illegal act. Blue Ribbon Committee Chairman Richard Gordon stresses that resigned Philippine National Police General Oscar Albayalde cannot evade any liabilities. Tanayin niyo lang kung pwede pa siyang kasuhan. The answer is yes. Tanayin niyo kung criminal. The answer could be yes. Kung may enough evidence kami, I think we do. Uh, but uh, it's up to the DOJ. In connection with this, the Senator has also asked Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara to give protection to the witnesses against the Ninja Cops. This includes the perpetuation of the witnesses' testimonies. It means that they will go to the court and they will have to be there. Uh, and uh, in which case, uh, if anything happens, hopefully not, that will be admissible in court. The witnesses Senator Gordon is referring to are the barangay officials from whom Johnson Lee sought assistance and the Mexico police to where the barangay officials turned Lee over. Lee allegedly bribed the cops involved with 50 million pesos in exchange for his freedom. The policemen allegedly arrested a different Chinese suspect to replace Lee. The Senate Blue Ribbon Committee will leave the assessment to the DOJ if the witnesses need to be covered by the government's Witness Protection Program or WPP. It's also up to former CIDG Chief and now Baguio City Mayor Benjamin Magalong and retired Police General Rudy Lacadin if they want to be under the WPP. According to Secretary Guevara, meanwhile, he will wait for a formal request from Senate before they take action. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. A magnitude 6.3 earthquake jolted Mindanao at exactly 7.37 this evening. According to the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIVOX, the tectonic earthquake's epicenter was located 22 kilometers of Tulunan, North Cotabato. The tremor was felt at varying intensities in many parts of Mindanao. Intensity 7 in Kidapawan City. Intensity 5, South Cotabato, Alabel, Sarangani. Intensity 4, Kiamba, Sarangani, Tibuli, South Cotabato, General Santos City. Cagayan de Oro City, Gingoog City, Misamis Oriental. Cagayan de Oro, Misamis Oriental. And Intensity 1, Dipolog City, 
Bisling City. More details of the earthquake will be reported later in Y News. Welcome back to Y News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. I'm Alex Baltazar and here are the headlines. Two persons accused in the Batocabe Slay case want to turn into state witnesses. Police Brigadier General Devold Sinas officially assumes post as the National Capital Region Police Office Chief. The Anti-Red Tape Authority or ARTA identifies three agencies that need to shape up and improve their services. 120 high-cost medicines to drop prices by more than 56% in December. And a candidate in Rizal province has been crowned as Miss Cuba Philippines 2019. Good evening. Two suspects in the assassination of a Cubicol party list representative Rodel Batocabe want to become state witnesses. A motion was filed by the lawyer of Jaywin Babor and Emmanuel Rosselio for them to be discharged from the case. Babor and Rosselio were the drivers of the two motorcycles used as the getaway vehicles by the suspects who shot and killed Batocabe December last year. The gun used in the crime was also recovered in Rosselio's home in Santo Nino, Philip Camarines Sur. According to Legazpi Regional Trial Court Branch 10 presiding Judge Maria Teresa San Juan Loqueliano, they will study the motion filed by the suspects. The court is also getting the side of the prosecution and the others accused, including the alleged mastermind former Daraga Albay Mayor Carlwin Baldo. The court has 30 days to decide on the request of the two accused. <music> former Central Visayas Regional Director Police Brigadier General Debold Sinas formally assumes post as the National Capital Region Police Office or NCRPO Chief. One of his priorities is the banning of playing golf among the policemen during weekdays. Harleen Delgado tells us why. The command for the National Capital Region Police Office, or NCRPO, has been officially turned over to Police Brigadier General De Bold Sinas this morning at Camp Bagundiwa, Taguig City. He replaces Police Major General Guillermo Eliazar, who has been promoted as the Chief of the Directorial Staff, the fourth highest position in the PNP. Eliazar takes pride of the highlights during his 16-month stint as the NCRPO Chief. These include the lower crime rate due to intensified campaign against illegal drugs and the strict enforcement of city ordinances. He also cites the internal cleansing efforts within their ranks. Eleazar is confident that Sinas, who is also his Mista in the PMA Hinirang class of 1987, will continue the good performance of the regional office. With the uh, presence of uh, General Sinas, who will be my classmate, uh, itutuloy niya at pagtataguyod itong ating nasimulan para ipagpatuloy ang uh, uh, pagsugpo sa illegal na droga, hindi lamang dito sa Metro Manila, kung hindi sa buong Pilipinas. The new Metro Manila Police Chief, meanwhile, says he will not change any previous efforts of the NCRPO. He says he will enhance the strategies of the illegal drug campaign, the pursuit against high-value targets and internal cleansing. Sinas also reminds the Metro Manila cops that discipline will be strictly observed inside and outside of camps and police precincts. He also warns against the use of illegal drugs, illegal gambling, and acceptance of bribery from businessmen. The new NCRPO chief will also focus on the ban of playing golf among policemen during weekdays. He says this is to prevent the cops from abandoning their posts and practicing corrupt activities. He has filed cases against cops who had failed to comply with this directive during his stint as the PNP Central Visayas Chief. It takes time maglaro. So minimum that is four hours. Imagine uh, ang mga tao namin maglalaro ng alas 7 matapos yan uh, ano na, 11. Tapos papagod pa yan, maligo pa yan. Ano nang oras yan magre-report? Sinas adds, no revamp among their ranks is seen, but he wants to assign female cops in top ranks. Why not utilize them in an operational aspect? Why relegate them to administrative if they could share or do their job for operational competing their male counterpart? Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Taguig City.
President Rodrigo Duterte has asked the Philippine National Oil Company Exploration Corporation or PNOC EC President and CEO Petro Aquino Jr. to resign over an investment deal with Russian firm Rosneft Oil Company. This was confirmed by Malacanang on Tuesday in a statement issued by presidential spokesman Salvador Panelo. Panelo said Duterte asked Aquino to step down from his position and submit his resignation before the office of the president for loss of confidence in relation to the administration's war against corruption in government. It was reported earlier that Aquino was meted out with 30-day suspension as PNOCEC president and CEO after signing an agreement with a Russian oil company without the approval of the PNOCEC board or energy secretary Alfonso Pusi as the chairman. The MRT3 management plans to make the train system's fences taller to avoid an intrusion such as what happened yesterday. Joe Manano tells us why. The operations of MRT3 were disrupted for over two hours yesterday after a vagrant man jumped to his death on the rail tracks between Ayala and Buendia stations. Based on the initial investigation, the vagrant man jumped off from the MRT3's fence and fell down the tracks. This is not the first time such incident happened in MRT3. There had also been incidents before in which thieves were caught for stealing power cables. According to the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA, there were previous cases wherein hamog kids were caught crossing the MRT fences. Marami, di ba, makikita nyo doon, uh, wala pang nadidisgrasya. Na, matatandaan natin yung mga batang hamog na nang i-snatch dyan sa EDSA. E dyan din tumatalot sa bakod ng MRT, ano? aakyatin nila yan, kaya nila talunin. They will cross over and cross over to the other side. Ang hirap mong habulin yan dahil bakod yan. The UNTV News team observed today the situation of the MRT3 on EDSA. Most parts have tall fences, some surrounded with barbed wires. But there are portions that are low and not fenced. Just like a portion between Ayala and Buendia stations where the incident occurred yesterday. MRT3 Director Michael Capati explains the design and structure of the MRT's fences and walls are in accordance with the standards of experts. Sa pagpano, sa pelo, nire-review namin ngayon kung ano pa yung mga kailangan namin gawin para ma-prevent natong ganitong inclusions from time to time. The MMD appeals to the public to immediately inform them in case they observe individuals attempting to jump off the MRT, overpasses or bridges, and other installations to prevent such incidents. Joan Amo, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Anti-Red Tape Authority or ARTA identifies Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, Land Registration Authority, and Food and Drug Administration as agencies that need to shape up and improve their services. Rosalie Paz explains why. Today is Jerry Maya Belhica's 99th day as the Director General of the Anti-Red Tape Authority or ARTA. And in less than a hundred days, among the agencies the ARTA has been investigating on, it has identified the top three agencies that need to shape up in terms of ease of doing business. These are the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB, Land Registration Authority or LRA, and the Food and Drug Administration or FDA. Well, toto, nakita talaga natin na they're really, they really need to shape up because there, it's there's really red tape uh, inside these agencies. Pero kasi if we if we would say na they're they're the most, marami pa kasi mga agencies na hindi pa ho natin na totoorily na investigate. Tomorrow, the ARTA is set to file complaints before the Office of the Ombudsman against a provincial governor for violating the Ease of Doing Business Act. The said official has been found to have violated the necessary processing time and zero contact policy for business permits. Since the start of his stint as the ARTA Director General, Belhika has already filed cases against seven government officials and employees. We intend to do is this the filing of cases every week. For violating the ease of doing business, the penalty for first offense is administrative liability with a six-month suspension, while for the second offense, violators will be held administratively and criminally with penalties of dismissal from the service, permanent disqualification from holding public office, imprisonment of one to six years, and a fine of not less than 500,000 to 1 million pesos.
Rosa Likoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanya. The prices of 120 medicines may drop by more than half before the year ends. But the health department says an executive order signed by President Rodrigo Duterte is needed for the price regulation. Aiko Miguel explains why. It's a good news for Filipinos if before the year ends, the prices of 120 medicines in the country will drop by more than 50% in December. According to the Department of Health or DOH, this include medicines for hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, lung diseases, neonatal diseases, arthritis, psoriasis, diabetes, and cancer. The DOH explains these medicines have been chosen because these medicines are more expensive in the Philippines than in other countries. Medicines which have limited competition in the market or those that are being monopolized will also have their price reduced. All of these efforts are because of the implementation of the Cheaper Medicines Act, which aims to give Filipinos access to medicines for their primary diseases. But for the price regulation of these medicines, an executive order should be signed by President Duterte. Based on the Cheaper Medicines Act, only the president has the power to regulate or set the price cap of medicines in the country. DOH is now capping the maximum retail price or MRP of the medicines to be submitted to the president. So, nasa final stages na kami ng review, isusumite na po sa Secretary of Health, uh, pagdidiskusyon uh, pag na at the executive committee level and hopefully by end of the month or early November, we will now submit it to the office of the president for his decision. The DOH adds an outpatient drug benefit will be implemented in the next two years. This is aside from the hospitalization benefits of Filipinos under the Universal Health Care Law. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. The Philippines bagged two major awards at the 2019 World Travel Awards in Vietnam on October 12. The 2019 World Travel Awards has hailed the Department of Tourism or DOT as Asia's leading tourism board after it recorded a significant increase in visitor arrivals for the country in the past year. There was a 14.08% year-on-year increase in the country's international inbound traffic based on the data of the DOT. The country was also recognized as Asia's leading dive destination. According to the DOT, dive tourism is one of the key areas in the National Tourism Development Plan. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat said the awards are for all Filipinos to celebrate. Liz Mabao of Rizal Province was crowned Miss Cuba Philippines 2019. She bested 16 other ladies who advocate caring for the ocean. She says she is ready to fulfill her responsibilities as the country's new ocean ambassador. Nina Armilio tells us why. Ocean ambassador number! Maba was overwhelmed when she heard her name called as the Miss Cuba Philippines 2019 last night at the Music Museum. This beauty from Rizal Province revealed she's been wanting to join the pageant for two years now because of its good cause. Although she doesn't know how to swim, she has grown fond of scuba diving, exploring the water world, and taking care of it. I'm really nervous and afraid of water but then I overcome it and I realized that there's really nothing to fear and that fear is just a state of mind. As the new ocean ambassador, Liz says she's ready to take the responsibility of wearing the crown. I could use my knowledge in the art of informing, influencing and motivating people into certain causes such as the, cause, uh, the problems that our marine biodiversity is encountering. Liz's journey in the next 12 months will be filled with activities that aim to save the ocean, just like what her predecessors did. In the last 12 months, we've only been able to accomplish, it may, it may be a band-aid solution in terms of the ocean cleanup, but definitely has raised uh, awareness and definitely put in the public eye what's truly happening. 
Miss Cuba Philippines 2019 first runner-up Korea de Leonueva of Taguig City will also take part in the pageant's advocacy through her organization called Dive with the Heart, which she founded. We used to really, um, do cleanup activity on a monthly basis. And it's my birthday next week, October 22, so I'm going to have a birthday cleanup dive. Cindy Maduma, the Miss Cuba Philippines National Director and host of the UNTV program, The Dive, shares her sentiments on dive sites in the country that need urgent action. I have dive in these places and I think ano, yung result of climate change, the result of plastic pollution is really devastating to know. But still, there's a hope and what we can do is to actually do direct action to it. So every dive we consider it as a cleanup dive. Miss Cindy is excited to see Liz head for Kota Kinabalu, Malaysia, where she became the first Filipina to be crowned Miss Cuba International in 2015. Liz, a fresh graduate of Communication Arts, is proud and confident to represent the country to the Miss Cuba International 2019 on November 16. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. To complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are the top stories. A magnitude 6.3 earthquake rocked parts of Mindanao this evening. The quake, tectonic in origin, had a depth of 15 kilometers along Tuludan Town in North Cotabato. It struck at the area at 7.37 p.m. The tremor was felt at varying intensities in many parts of Mindanao. Intensity 7 in Kidapawan City, Intensity 5 South Cotabato, Alabel, Sarangani, and sent Intensity 4 Kiamba, Sarangani, Tiboli, South Cotabato, General Santo City. Intensity 3 in Cagayan de Oro City, Gingoog City, Misamis Oriental. And Intensity 2, Cagayan de Oro, Misamis Oriental. Intensity 1, Dipolog City, Bislig City. Meanwhile, a magnitude 5.5 aftershock jolted Sultan Kudarat at 8.09 p.m. A school in Dipolog City collapsed due to the earthquake. Meanwhile, people inside a mall in Davao City were immediately evacuated. Kidapawan Mayor Joseph Evangelista has declared the suspension of classes in all levels in public and private schools in the city tomorrow. The evokes warned of aftershocks, adding that more damage is also expected. Meanwhile, President Rodrigo Duterte appoints former House Speaker Feliciano Sani Belmonte as Special Envoy to Japan for Trade and Market Access. Based on a palace announcement yesterday, October 15, was the date of Belmonte's appointment. Aside from being a third-term congressman, Belmonte was the House Speaker under the Liberal Party during the 15th and 16th Congress but he resigned as Liberal Party Vice Chairman in September of last year. Barangay Cabezas in Trece Martires City, Cavite has taken the initiative to reuse plastic waste in its re residents produced. Watch how plastic trash is turned into an eco-friendly fence in this report. Plastic trash is one of the contributors to land and water pollution. Many plastics are defined as non-degradable, meaning they fail to decompose and are instead broken down into smaller and smaller particles. In fact, based on a study by the U.S. National Park Service, both Marine Lab in Florida and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Marine Debris Program, plastic beverage bottles decompose in approximately 450 years and plastic bags in 10 to 20 years. And according to a 2015 report on plastic pollution by the Ocean Conservancy Charity and the McKinsey Center for Business and Environment, the Philippines generates 2.7 million tons of plastic waste annually and 20% or half a million tons of that leaks into the ocean and to curb trash problems in at least a pinch. Barangay Cabezas in Trece Marteres City, Cavite launched Project EcoBrick. Plastic trash like foils are cut into thin strips and placed in plastic beverage bottles. 
According to Nestorio Colada, the Cabezas Barangay Chairman, he wants to set an example to the Barangay Hall employees through this initiative. Dahil kahit kasi sa bahay namin, nagawa rin ako niyan bago ako sumweldo. Mm -hmm. Talaga ni lahat ko, para kay Tulara Tago, alibawa ng mga empleyado ko. Through the Eco Brick Project, there has been a significant decrease in the amount of waste the barangay produces. Doon sa amin, nakita ko, may higit sa kalahati ng basura halos ang na, nababawas dahil na maraming plastik ang nagugupit. Even a small initiative is a step towards achieving a goal. Pollution in the world may be a global issue, but one's little waste is a contribution to the solution nonetheless. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. And for the news abroad, here's Stephanie C. reporting live from Hong Kong. Stephanie, good evening. Good evening, William. Hong Kong leader Carrie Lam was forced to abandon her annual policy address today after some lawmakers jeered as she began speaking, causing an unprecedented cancellation of the speech in the legislature of the Chinese-ruled city. This report details why. <laughs> Opposition lawmakers disrupted what could have the first time Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam had been able to deliver a policy address in the chamber. Hong Kong leader Carrie Lam was forced to suspend her annual address after being heckled in the city's parliament. <laughs> After a first interruption, the session resumed only to be interrupted again. It was then suspended with the address delivered by pre-recorded video. Pro-establishment lawmakers condemned the interruption of the session, saying the address was important for the city's economic future. Lam's interrupted speech came just hours after U.S. lawmakers supported Hong Kong's protesters by passing a bill aimed at upholding human rights in the city. The suspension means the extradition bill, which sparked months of protests, was unable to be withdrawn formally. Hong Kong has experienced months of protests since the extradition bill was introduced in April. The Legislative Council, or LegCo, resumed on Wednesday for the first time since it was stormed by protesters in July. Now the withdrawal of the bill will only be possible once LegCo resumes. The bill was suspended in July, but the move failed to quell protests in the city. Stephanie C, UNTV News and Rescue. Residents in Fukushima were in shock on Tuesday as they cleaned up nearly three days after Typhoon Hagibis smashed into central and eastern Japan. Kathimaraos reports why. In Yamagawamachi, which was inundated after the Abukuma River flooded due to the torrential rain, residents Masao Hirayama and Teruko Hirayama were busy with cleaning house with the help of friends, family, and volunteers. Wet furniture, books, picture, and other household items were piled on the muddy, narrow street outside their home, adding to rubbish put out by their neighbors. Hirayama, who rebuilt their house in 1989 to raise the ground level following a flood in 1986, said they were shocked at the damage after the water swallowed its first floor. It is said that disaster strikes when you least expect it. And this is indeed true. I cannot believe it. I'm shocked. I don't know if we can recover from this. Fukushima is home to the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant that was crippled by a 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Officials for Tokyo Electric Power Company, which owns the plant, have said there was no leakage of contaminated water. Yes, it did remind me. But it is important to help each other. I want to recover all together, not just myself. The death toll in the worst typhoon to hit Japan for decades climbed to 66 on Tuesday as rescuers slogged through mud and debris in an increasingly grim search for the missing and as thousands of homes remained without power or water. The highest toll was in Fukushima Prefecture, north of Tokyo, where levees burst in at at least 14 places along the Abukuma River, which menders through a number of cities in the largely agricultural prefecture. 
At least 25 people died in Fukushima, including a mother and child who were caught in floodwaters, NHK said. Another child of the woman remains missing. Kat Dumaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Dutch police found a father and six adult children hidden in the basement of a remote farmhouse where they had reportedly spent years waiting for the end of time. Meanwhile, a fire at a fuel storage facility in the San Francisco Bay Area prompted a hazardous materials emergency Tuesday afternoon that led authorities to order about 12,000 people in two communities to stay inside with all windows and doors closed. Jovic Burmes has this report. In the USA, a fire broke out Tuesday in two tanks at a Nostar oil storage facility in Contra Costa County, California. Traffic was limited and nearby residents were ordered to shelter in place during the blaze at a storage plant near Phillips 66 Rodeo California refinery, according to the alert. No injuries were reported. In a statement, Nostar Energy said it was cooling nearby tanks to minimize the spread of fire but provided few other details. Officials did not say whether the fire was related to the aftermath of a small earthquake Monday night that disrupted operations at two other nearby oil refineries in Martinez, California. In Italy a severely disabled girl who was at the center of a high-profile life support treatment battle had been transferred to Italy on Tuesday to receive treatment in a Genoa hospital. Tafida was left brain damaged in February when a blood vessel burst in her brain and the Royal London Hospital had decided to suspend artificial ventilation. The girl's parents appealed against the hospital's decision not to transfer Tafida and on October 3rd, the High Court in London accepted to let the girl travel to Genoa. During the court case, Tafida's parents argued against specialists who suggested further treatment would be futile because of the permanent brain damage. Six young adults and their father were receiving medical treatment on Tuesday after Dutch police acting on a tip-off discovered them locked away in a secret room at an isolated farm. The six aged 18 to 25 and their ailing father were found near Runerwold, a village in the northern province of Drenthe. They had apparently had no contact with the outside world for nine years. The siblings had apparently lived in a hidden cellar and survived on vegetables and animals tended in a secluded garden. The family who, according to local news reports, had been waiting for the end of time, was discovered after one of the siblings escaped and sought help at a nearby cafe. A 58-year-old man, not the father of the children, was arrested at the farm. His role was unclear. Jovic Burma, CUNTV News and Rescue. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you very much, Stephanie C. Reporting live from Hong Kong. The country is all set to host the Southeast Asian Games that will start on November 30. This is the assessment of some members of Congress who made rounds in the new Clark City today. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. The construction of the facilities in the new Clark City are all done. And today, members of Congress declared the Philippines is now all set to host the Southeast Asian or Sea Games that will run from November 30 to December 11. Overall, we're 100% ready. Now, ang challenge this natin yung day to day. Senator Christopher Bongo, House Speaker Alan Peter Caetano, and the members of the House Committee on Youth and Sports personally made rounds in the new Clark City. There is an aquatic center with a 10-lane competition pool, an 8-lane training pool, and a diving pool. They also visited the athletic stadium where the track and field games will be held. Around 60% of 530 events will take place in New Clark City. So tapos na lahat na nandito sa Clark, um, ginagamit na, may nakatira ng mga athletes dito, yung sa Subic at Tagaytay, no? So far naman, on time sila, no? Although the facilities are ready, Caetano admitted they also expect some problems to happen during the hosting of the SEA Games. 
especially since the budget for sports this year was cut from 7.5 billion pesos down to 5 billion pesos. Pinupunoan ng volunteers yung pagkukulang natin sa mga paid workers. Despite the challenges, the House Speaker is positive that day-by-day -day problems will be solved if all parties concerned help each other towards a successful SEA Games hosting. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, New Clark City, Tarlac. Social media has turned an alley in Seattle into one of its top tourist destinations. It was also named as one of the top five germiest tourist attractions in 2009. Nina Armilio will tell us why. Pike Place Market attracts throngs of tourists every day. But follow a cobbled street down beneath the market and you'll discover something altogether less wholesome. Seattle's infamous gum wall. More than just a wall, it's a 50-yard stretch of alleyway whose walls are covered in gum left behind by visitors. The tradition started in the early 1990s and after a couple of futile attempts to get rid of the gum, market administrators declared the gum wall a tourist attraction in 1999. Visitors don't just leave their gum, they use the wall to make art and leave messages for people. It's even used as a spot to declare love. For one visitor from Colorado, seeing the gum wall was the fulfillment of a long-cherished dream. I think the gum wall is uh, absolutely incredible. It's way bigger than I thought it would be. Um, and I think it, it's just a really excellent place to be. I mean, I've been wanting to come here for many, many years now. Um, so to finally be here and see all the gum and see the people enjoying the gum, it's just, it's really cool. 30 years on from its inception, the gum wall continues to delight and disgust in equal measure. <laughs> Coming down this alley, it gives you a big whiff of something interesting. You definitely smell the gum, but you smell the age of the gum, ironically, so it's interesting. I think it's really colorful, but a little bit sticky and gross. In fact, today's gum wall is the product of just a few years of gum sticking. The alley was team cleaned four years ago, with workers removing 907 kilos of gum. As soon as it was cleaned, the gum started appearing on the walls again. And in the age of Instagram and social media, the gum wall keeps attracting more and more visitors, all looking for the perfect selfie moment. It's kind of gross. <laughs> very gross, but it's very interesting too. Art. With another five yearly cleaning expected soon, gum chewers will soon have a new fresh brick canvas to decorate when they visit Seattle. Nina Armilia, UNCV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this October 16, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. Why not utilize them in our operational aspect? Why relegate them to administrative if they could share or do their job for operational competing their male counterpart? Si papail namin yon ang kailangan lang namin yung mga testimony o yung mga transcript doon sa Congress para umusog na yung kaso. Means that they will go to the court and they will ask. Well, totoo, nakita talaga natin na they're really, they really need to shape up. Because there, it's, there's really red tape uh, inside these agencies. Pero kasi if we, if we would say na they're, they're the most, marami po kasi mga agencies na hindi pa po natin na totally na investigate. So, nasa final stages na kami ng review, isusumitin na po sa Secretary of Health. Uh, Pag-review uh, 
pagdidiskusyon na, na at the executive committee level and hopefully by end of the month or early November, we will now submit it to the Office of the President for his decision.